It's Bullseye. I'm Jesse Thorne. Simon Rich is one of my favorite comedy writers in the world. He got started young, first as editor of the Harvard Lampoon, then at just 23 as a writer on Saturday Night Live. He's also written for Pixar, The New Yorker, and he's the author of now seven books. He created the TV show Man Seeking Woman, and he just had another pilot picked up by ABC, and he is not yet 35 years old. Earlier this year, he wrote a book called Hits and Misses. It's a collection of short stories, some of his funniest work to date, and who, man, is he funny? We invited him to come by the Bullseye Studio and read some of his favorites. This one is called New Client. Albie Katz, founder and CEO of Bright Stars Talent, was great at signing actors. Unfortunately, he was less great at providing them with actual careers. The brightest star he'd ever managed was a dancing chimpanzee named Mr. Mo, and he hadn't worked much since the formation of PETA. The humans Albie signed hadn't fared much better. One hardworking man eked out a living as an ass double. The best the rest could hope for was to play a murdered corpse on CSI. Albie knew he was a hack, and he would have quit years ago if it hadn't been for his wife, Rose. Albie had proposed to her when they were still in high school, vowing to take care of her until the day she died. It was one of the few promises he'd kept, and he was determined not to break it. He couldn't afford full-time nursing care, but he still earned enough from his roster of corpses and asses to keep her well-fed and content. She couldn't drink wine anymore since it interfered with all her medicines, but he'd found a non-alcoholic brand at the Rite Aid, and every day he served her glass after glass on a silver-plated tray. She didn't talk much, but when he stooped down to kiss her, she closed her eyes and beamed, just like she had on their first date. Albie had just tucked her in for her afternoon nap when he heard someone knocking on the door. It started as an eager tap, but quickly intensified into a menacing thump. He didn't bother peeking through the peephole. He was 81 years old with stage four emphysema. Who else could it be? Death was taller than he expected, about eight foot six if you included his pointy hood. Are you Albie Katz? He intoned in an unsettling baritone. Probably no use denying it, Albie said. Come on in. Death followed him into the bungalow, stooping to get under the doorframe. Can I get you a drink? Albie asked. No, Death said. You sure? Albie grabbed a bottle of Rose's Rite Aid wine. This is a great vintage, a grand crew from France. Happy to open it. Death held up an hourglass. Silence, mortal. Your time has come. Got it, Albie said. Let me just say goodbye to Rose. He stepped into the bedroom and looked down at his snoring wife. He was about to kiss her forehead when an idea occurred to him. It was a long shot, sure, but what did he have to lose? He reached into the closet and found his best blazer, the good luck shark skin he always wore to meetings. Then he cracked his neck and strolled back into the living room. Huh, he mumbled. Death glared at Albie, his red eyes burning like a pair of embers. What? Oh, nothing, Albie said, flicking his wrist. You probably wouldn't be interested. What is it, mortal? Growled the Reaper. Tell me. Well, I'm a talent scout, Albie said. I represent actors, features in TV mostly. He took out a business card and offered it up to death. The Reaper turned it over in his giant bony hand. Anyway, Albie continued, I guess I was just curious if you'd ever considered performing. Ha ha. Death said sarcastically. I'm serious, Albie said. There's something about you. You've got a certain quality, a presence. That's ridiculous, Death said. I'm not an actor. You've never even thought about it? No. Really, Albie said? I find that hard to believe. You're telling me you've never once performed in your entire life? Death was silent for a moment. His eyes were still burning, but with slightly less intensity than before. I mean, I did a little theater back in high school, but that was a really long time ago. What kind of theater? It doesn't matter. It was a long time ago. It was stupid. Come on, Albie begged. I'm curious. Death shrugged his knobby shoulders. I guess the one thing I did that didn't totally suck was this production of Macbeth. Albie raised his bushy eyebrows. Whoa, you did Shakespeare? 
What part did you play? Death toed the carpet. Well, actually, he said, if you must know, I played the part of Macbeth. Albie whacked Death in the robe. Seriously? The lead? Death waved his bony hands in the air. It's no big deal, he said. It's mostly just because no one else wanted to do it. Albie smirked. No one? Well, I beat out a couple guys. Death allowed. But they weren't very good. His voice lowered. I mean, one guy was pretty good, and he'd done a lot of plays before, and it was my first time auditioning. I got it over him, so, you know, that was cool. He shrugged again. But like I said, it was a long time ago. Sounds like you were pretty good. I mean, that was all right. Death said. Like, after that play, people were definitely like, you should pursue that. Like, if you look at my yearbook, it's all, see you on Broadway, stuff like that. But what did they know? It was a long time ago. It was stupid. Listen, Albie said. There's this script making the rounds right now, this Scorsese thing. He's looking for an actor who's over eight feet tall, with a baritone voice, eyes that burn, not too experienced. I know you've got a full-time job, but I'm sure he'd be grateful if you would at least go and meet with him. A smile flashed across Death's face, which he quickly suppressed. I mean... I guess it might be interesting to meet with him, he said, just so I could have, like, a funny story, you know, as a goof. Albie nodded. I'm not even sure I even want to do it. Death stressed. Like, even if you wanted to cast me in a movie, it's not like it's my big dream to become some actor. Of course not, Albie said. I mean, I don't mean any offense to actors. Death clarified. It just seems like kind of a silly life. It's completely silly, Albie confirmed. Always being hounded by the press, people asking for autographs, trying to be your buddy. Yeah. Death said. Yeah. Still, it might be fun just to meet with Scorsese. As a goof, you know? Just as a fun, stupid goof. Right, Albie said. As a goof. He gestured at the empty hourglass. Of course, these meetings do take a little bit of time to set up. Death hesitated. I guess I don't have to take you right this second. Albie grinned and whipped out his standard Bright Stars contract. Death's hands twitched anxiously as he flipped through the official-looking pages. Should I change my name? He asked. Is Death too Jewish? We can discuss later, Albie said. Death nodded and signed on the dotted line. Okay. He said. So what now? Is it like a thing where you call me when there's something? Yes, I call you. Cool. Death said. Cool. He started to leave, but stopped in the entryway. One other thing I might as well tell you about is that I also kind of play a little music. Mostly guitar, but also piano and bass. Good to know, Albie said. And I took two years of tap, Ted said quickly. Okay, I'll let you get to work. You'll call me, right? That's how it works. I'll call you, Albie confirmed. Okay. Death said. Okay. He floated out the door and vanished in a haze of wispy smoke. Albie heard a rustling sound in the bedroom. He grabbed the Rite Aid wine, went inside, and kissed Rose softly on the cheek. Who are you talking to, sweetie? She asked. I just landed a new client. Ooh, Albie, she said, beaming. You're the best in the biz. He poured out two glasses and they clinked them together. I'm not bad, he said. Simon Rich, reading the short story, New Client, from his book, Hits and Misses. Uh, all of his books are so funny. I, I really cannot begin to tell you how funny Simon Rich is. Uh, if you've got a trip coming up maybe for the holidays, pick up that new one, Hits and Misses. You won't be disappointed.